you want me to shut that off? They're still making money on the spaces. <laughs> Almost everybody's going except for us. Like podcasting, so it's kind guys, of. Guys, don't worry. I'll get you guys all ice cubes. My mom said if you put ice cubes on your wrist, it immediately cools you off. You said temples. Well, now I changed. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrist. No, oh, it's wrist. Is it wrist? I thought it was I back of the was, neck. I thought it was supposed to be like your the heat exits to your head and like and it, like it would be. Okay. I just know when I was cold, my parents would be like, put on a hat. I'd be like, that's not going to do anything. Just, everyone needs to take cold showers. That's true. And then ice they'll bath. get used to ice, ice baths. Bath. Go to the Are Russian, like Gwyneth the Russian bath. And yeah, I, I'm not out. with the hot shower either. God, yeah. all this stuff's coming out right now. Yeah, the hot showers are also, you know, <laughs> babyish. Oh, have you been so... to the Russian baths? No. Yeah. Pretty good. I have been inside the building yeah. with other people. Yeah, you mean the one in, like, in East Village? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. I haven't yet. I haven't. You I haven't know, yet, as if you time. just got here and you're doing a bucket list. Well, the, there was there was uh, one of the first places that I sort of sublet, or I rented a room with this former British boxer, and uh, it didn't. I, I don't know. After two days, he said he wanted to kill me, so I moved out. Um, <laughs> I have a great voicemail of him saying, I'll hunt you down like a rabbit. Oh, nice. And I knew he frequented the Russian bathhouse, so I, I avoided it. For right. A it's a weird place, though. I had never been, like, for fun for myself, like, but my ex-boyfriend really liked it, and he would, like, every every weekend drag me there. And it's just, it's very uncomfortable, like, as a woman, too. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, it's incredibly, it's like, strange. grimy, and, like, people look at you weird, and... I don't like a lot the of thing. people. It's clothing optional. Yeah, and sometimes. they have those weird like sticks that the Russian people. Like, yeah, yeah, I they, they I like, don't like you that. know like the yeah. branches where they yeah. all hit you with the branches. <laughs> Are we talking about the bathhouse? Yeah, it's just too much Russian dicks in there. That's yeah. my problem. Yeah, I go it's in there and I have and I have to wear sandals in the shower. Yeah, it's a lot it's of disgusting. It's a lot of penis. People don't though. There's a lot of dongs so in there, and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming to WVFP Pod NYC. Today we have Madison Campbell, founder of Lita. Can I say that? Yeah. You're, you're a founder. I am There's a founder. There's somebody else in there, right? Or is it just you? No, it's just me. It's you. It's oh, me. she's the solo girl boss of Lita. I'm the girl Lita boss. Lita Health. And we also have Lucian Wintrich. Um, uh, Baxter Wintrich, the fourth. The fourth. Um, known around New York City as an artist and intellectual, but maybe more known by people at home for his work as a national political correspondent and commentator. White Especially House at the course. White House press course. Go ahead and step on it, Lucian. Um, with uh, <laughs> the Gateway Pundit. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> I knew that Lucian was going to step on my introduction. And I wanted to tell him first not to do it. But I don't think there's any stopping him, really. Well, you know, as a former uh, member of Elite Press, I'm used <laughs> to correcting uh, information. That's true. And especially media people like myself. We have to be watched all the time. Uh, thanks for coming here today, guys. Uh, let's start with Madison, um, because I don't know you as well. You can notice you notice I'm just right up Lucian's ass. Yeah. But I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know you at all. Oh, wait, and Chloe's here too. Did I, I say guess. that? No, that's I, okay. I never introduced her anymore. Well, I'm, it's okay. I think Is it okay? Yeah, we're good. Okay, I'm sorry, Chloe. No, it's okay. Um, let's start with Madison. Your, your company is making, um, is this your launch year? My launch year. Is this the year this is launching? No, I mean, we've been around since 2019, but our product is very controversial, so it takes a long time for us to kind of get into the market. Okay, because Lita Health manufactures an at-home rape kit. Correct. Right? Correct. Um, it the felt, first ever at-home rape kit, at least in America. It felt, oh, there's some, there's some somewhere else. Well, there's also the rape kits that have, like, duct tape and, you know, like, you know, other things to help people rape people. We're the opposite <laughs> side. Okay. You know, like this isn't a how to rape. It's not kids. a how to rape. It's not how to do it, right? It's it's the other side. So I mean, that that You're one funny. has been sold at Home Depot for a long time, but no, ours it's very is, funny. It's very different. Uh, okay, but but I've noticed you. But you. <laughs> Look, but you I, guys, I, you guys, you, it kind of looks like you guys are really ramping up right now. When yeah, I look at sure. the website, you're filling spots, you're, sure. you know, securing all the stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And it feels like it's going to come out pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, our, so, you know, where this kind of comes from is I myself was a sexual assault survivor on my college campus. Okay. And I didn't move forward and get a, a rape kit examination, most commonly known as a sexual assault kit examination. And um, I just didn't feel comfortable, right? Like being touched 
being interrogated by someone after you've been raped was something very, very difficult for me to, to actually go through. And so, you know, I started this, this company because I wanted to create something that actually allowed survivors like myself who didn't feel comfortable to collect some sort of evidence, right, right, after they've been sexually assaulted. Without, like, the questionnaire and, like, the people kind of shaking you down just to just to kind yeah. of log the complaint. Log, log the complaint, you know, be able to collect evidence as close to the event as humanly possible, right? DNA degrades over time. Right. And so if you have the opportunity to get this within the comfort of your own home in, you know, two to three hours after the incident, the likelihood that you're going to collect a larger amount of DNA is much higher, right? right? And so if we can do this, that is absolutely amazing. And, you know, it's one of those things. I've talked about sexual assault quite literally for like four years, almost right. five years. Yeah. I like to be jovial, you know, and, and be able to joke about it. It's a very sensitive subject. It's very close to my heart. It's very important that we solve this. You know, but at the end of the day, we we have to be able to talk about it in a like, in an okay way, right? We have to be able to not just be so serious. Yes, this is a very serious right. thing, but like, you know, we go and talk to college students and no college students actually know what to even do yeah. after a sexual assault. And you can't just lecture them, right? And be like, you know, blah, 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 blah. You actually have to talk to them on a level that they understand. And so, you know, I'm, um, I started the company when I was 23, I'm 27 now. And oh, I think- okay. Yeah, I think there's a good opportunity for someone like me who's not only a survivor, but, you know, um, is kind of within that age demographic to go and talk to folks that might be experiencing this. Are you the only one doing this? Uh, you, you said in America before, but is there anybody else? Because I've never um, come... So what we've created is an early evidence kit. Yeah. Um, the notion of collecting evidence within the comfort of your own home is not novel. Survivors have been doing it for ages, just not without a kit, right? Like whether it's taking your underwear and putting it in a bag or doing a swab and then bringing it to the police station right. or even any other victims of crime. Like if there was a brick thrown into your you know, window, right? If, if something like that happened, you collect the brick, you bring it to the police station, right? Like that's self-collected evidence, text messages, videos, you name it. Yeah. Um, and then in Australia, the UK and Ireland, they actually use early evidence kits as well. They're not our kits. They're, you know, a similar kit. Um, and the whole notion is it used by like a civilian there? It's it's used by civilians and police are involved as well. Okay. And so, um, and in Australia, they're actually putting them in um, large mining operations because in like the mines um, in Western Australia, there's a large amount of men compared to female employees okay. that work in the mines. So they're actually keeping early evidence kits in the mines, um, you know, so that if there is any survivors, they can actually uh, collect evidence. It does sound interesting to rape somebody in a mine. Haven't yeah, done you're pretty that. far from a doctor there. It'd be it'd be very yeah it'd be very very far from a doctor. Um, and it'd be kind of a nice uh, fetish uh, porn <laughs> series. Mine being, porn being raped in a mine. Yeah, there's one flashlight. Yeah. Um, what it, what is what do people say the most? Because I, I hear you already. You're kind of hitting the points about evidence. Yeah. And self collection. Yes. Is that is that what the pushback is? Is that what takes so long? Is is that is that what people normally bring up as the issue here is self collection? Um, the notion of self collection or self evidence. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's as it pertains to whether or not it will be admissible in a court of law. Right. Which in and of itself, we could have an entire podcast determining like well, because some know, things the get it, it's so case to case. It like, is. Uh, you know, a judge will determine or yeah. a jury will determine the weight. Um, the evidence of or the admissibility of evidence is you know given a weight of it. So like evidence that would be taken for a SART examination. So an examination done in a hospital, say that's a golden standard. Yeah. You could say, oh, I weight this at a 10 versus ours. Maybe you weight it as a five, you know, versus a, you know, Q-tip that someone put in their vagina and got, you know, specimen out. Maybe that's a two. But do we want to allow people to be a zero right. and not have any evidence, not right? Not have any evidence. And that's kind of what I'm saying. I'm not saying that we should be not telling survivors to go and do that golden standard, but in the likelihood, and we know that the majority of survivors don't actually collect evidence after they've been sexually assaulted. So right. are we telling those people is that, that Is that because anything? they think that it doesn't matter then? Like there's stuff like this yeah. hasn't been around. So is it yeah. people don't collect evidence because they think like, what do I do with it? What, how or, would I collect it? Or it's it, too or traumatizing, right. you know, for yeah. them. Um, 
But like, you know, in and of itself, like the product is so controversial that in the first month of the company, we received 16 cease and desist letters, five subpoenas, and 16 members of Congress wrote in opposition in the oh. first month of the company. Okay. And you weren't even, you didn't even have a product then, right? I didn't have a product then. I'm right. 23 years old. I got deposed by the Michigan Attorney General. I'm going to, oh, really? I did. I want to hit you. I want to hit you with something that you've probably heard. You're a smart lady and you've been doing this a while. Of course. I'm going to, I just thought of this. So somebody else can jump in, but I think I'm going to throw out the first issue that I'm thinking of. False allegations? No, we'll get to that. I was <laughs> thinking, I was thinking about college campuses. Sure. And Title IX. Sure. And the experience we all had during the Obama administration with Title IX. Sure. And how there were courts that weren't courts. You know, there were things Kangaroo going on courts. in schools. Was it? Kangaroo courts. There were things that were going on in schools that kind of had the air of a judicial process, but they weren't really judicial processes. No. So do you think that people are afraid of this coming out of a time like that where they think about, okay, you know, we have these things going on with young women in schools where we have an extra judicial process sometimes. How, is a boy going to get thrown out or whatever? Sure. Is it possible that this could be a part of that, you know, where now it's more extrajudicial systems where you have a court that is not a court and now you have a test that's not, nobody's not on top of it. Well, I'm asking if, do you think so that this in, is a real consideration where this might be used not in a court of law, but in these kind of college... I 100%. So Title IX has really, I mean, and whether or not this is a good thing or a bad thing, yes. really has no level of scrutiny when it comes to evidence, right? It's, right. Um, yeah. you know, and, and that has been debated heavily. But, you know, so if we're already existing in kind of like a kangaroo court situation like Title IX, yeah. then isn't the notion of having any evidence that is of a scientific value actually making it more of a... Making it better. Making it better, making answer. it more into like the criminal justice process, yeah. right? Beyond a reasonable doubt versus I think this is probably, you know, give or take what has happened. And so, you know, we believe that college students, because one in four college women will be sexually assaulted during their four years. I was, right? That's why I, right. I started this. You know, if we have the opportunity for college students to be able to, to utilize this, then, you know, is this an opportunity for them to get justice, quote unquote, right. um, in the Title IX process, which oftentimes can be arguous well, and okay, without well, any yeah, evidence. Get justice. You said that they're not in use whatsoever, right? Um, you have one there on the table. If I were straight on, in that cute little dress, you look a little rapable. Um, but I look down at the table, I see I this, I see, I see yeah. this rape survivor kit and, um, you know, uh, how second many, guessing my carnal instincts. How many of so these should you a, have in the house? Is it more of a prop for these, these, uh, institutions? Well, I guess attractive women carry one of those around. Are you and calling you avoid me attractive? The, Oh my God! I'll give that to you. What, Thank you, know, you very I mean, much. I, I didn't think you were straight, but <laughs> if I'm willing to be able to, uh, gay men are allowed to judge. Yeah. Gay men are allowed to judge. Yeah, yeah. I, often I, they're better at it. Often they're better at it. So yeah. honestly, I take that at, at even a higher compliment. So it's not something in use; it's a deterrent. So you want women around uh, various colleges carrying around a uh, rape kit. Right. Interesting. And then a guy looks at them, says, "Whoa, she she has the well, kit." Well, I'll t I'll tell you when I do. So I've carried the um the large like the actual like government rape kits in my bag, um usually like a tote bag on the New York subway, and I'll tell you, people stay away from you. What? <laughs> I bet. What? Um, what's the difference between what you're doing and what that New York um police what the whatever or what, the New York what police a, is. a government rape kit would be? Yeah. What? Are, are there are they are you pretty much modeling it just after theirs? Is there something different about theirs? You know, so Tell we've taken we're... the most crucial steps um, of what a rape kit would have. So basically swabbing from the areas of which you were sexually assaulted. So whether that's a vaginal swab, anal swab, oral swab, and we've diluted it down. So in a normal rape kit, there could be twenty to thirty swabs. And in our rape kit, we have Oh, see? Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm, Media professional. I'm professional. Of <laughs> yeah. Me. I'm just kidding around. Uh, <laughs> this is the funnest rape kit, rape kit episode. <laughs> I feel like it's a dirty word saying that. Rape kit. Rape kit. That's why I make rape the Rape kit. Rape kit. Rape kit. Well, rape do you, do you that's why I make the joke about a rape kit. Yeah. yeah. I know. Do you call the, there has to be a better way to sexual assault it. evidence collection kit? Well, that's a terrible name too. 
Well, unfortunately, the early evidence kit is what we call it. Yeah, but the terminology is already in the zeitgeist from the regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it? You're you're a woman, uh, (laughs) I think. Well, you know, everybody's everything now. But if you were to uh, buy a kit, would you buy? You wouldn't buy a rape kit, right? That that would almost imply that you want to rape somebody. I mean, what's I, a name? What's a better see, name? For that's why you need to make the joke I, beforehand. I kind of feel like going off of what you were saying as the deterrent point, and on the other side, like the fact that they're not in the market yet, that it could just be like a, almost not that it is just symbolic, but symbolic empowerment of kind of giving women a chance to feel like they do have like autonomy in some like, sense. Like I'll blow this I, fucking whistle, kind of thing, right? Like, like I've got it here. It's like having a whistle on you. I'll blow this thing if anything goes wrong tonight, buddy. You know what I mean? And you've got Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, in the moments that I have been single and go on dates, and it's very interesting to be like, I'm I'm the rape kit girl. I'm the rape kit lady. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. you know. I feel like the fact that you've gotten that much pushback even before it's been utilized, even before you, like, made your first product, shows that there is a lot of symbolic importance of it. So I feel like the name maybe, I don't know. I mean, you're not calling it a rape kit, but the fact that you are, like, verbally at least, like, I don't know. I feel like that's yeah. not like if you I diluted initially it named too much. it something even worse. Um, the initial name for the company and the kit itself <laughs> was the Me Too kit. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that the time for that may how, have passed. How'd you settle yeah. on that initially? Was that well, just a different time? Kind it was of? a different time. time. Different time, yeah. yeah. It was a different time. And um You're good at marketing, so you were like Hey, did you did you trademark that? That would have been kind of clever. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I trademarked it because I had I had I literally started the company with like no money, got attacked, and um, and yeah. But when is it, that how you raised more money? Was from the attack? I was like, uh, yes. Is it like a political thing where you're like, look at all the people attacking me? You should help me. So out. truly, yeah. Our initial round of money came from people that said. There are so many people angry at you. You must be onto something. Right. Um, I think that sometimes when I see, yeah. Yeah. if somebody's getting like trashed in the press or whatever, yeah. I immediately look at whatever it is. Is it a music? Is it a movie that I'm supposed to hate? Yeah. Is somebody racist? I look at it right away. Yeah. You know, so that's the media doesn't know what they're doing like that. Now, well, what, I, was it men or women? Who was angry? Describe the uh, angry audience. Um, it was primarily Democrats. If we're just like going on like the political sphere, male or female, uh, combination. Well, it's a bunch of dudes, old dudes up there anyway. So no, but like... honestly, Republican men, a lot of Republican men have been very supportive of the company at large. I think because of the fact we are a for-profit company, we are venture-backed, we are a free market solution to a government problem. You know, for instance, there's over 200,000 kits, or there has been over 200,000 kits on the backlog of police evidence shelves. Right. We have a private laboratory that can test those kits in under 48 hours versus the government turnaround time of okay, two Okay, so years. this is this is like a 23andMe kind of thing where you, we're going to send this in in the mail. Yes. Oh, we can okay. Test I didn't it. get that part. All right. Yeah. No, I mean, we're, we're much more than just the kit. We do an early evidence kit. We test the kit. We have a clinical team of sexual assault nurse examiners to do a telehealth appointment to walk you through the entire kit. Yeah. We do toxicology screening for GHB, ketamine, or rohypnol, which are common date rape drugs, as well as we do STI Uh-oh. testing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, this has gotten way more interesting. Um, I, okay. Do you, Chloe? Do you have something to say? Because I'm about to just... No, uh, you, please can continue. Can I get you want me to keep yeah, continuing? Continue. All right. As the only member here of the very oppressed white male class, white yeah, well, straight male class, <laughs> okay. um, you, you know, you, got, you gay no, guys no, no, got no, it no. a little better. Lucian, gays got it a little Lucian better. Lucian did turn straight after looking at me because I'm so beautiful. <laughs> so right. The dress, yeah, the, the Barbie what? movie came And out. honestly, yes, it, it really changed a lot of things Okay, for as as the um, straight white male on campus who will be railroaded by such things, um, what... Well, obviously, the fear is you're going to swab my coffee cup or something. You're uh-huh. going to take a little bit of my DNA that I didn't offer on That's purpose. That's just how they found the killer in, um, in what, Bilboa Beach or something, Beach Killer down in Florida. They found, um, like, a piece of pizza, and they yes. um, discarded DNA. Yes. Maybe so, you should so, be more careful with your discarded DNA. Maybe. but <laughs> So what I'm saying is fear. Um, I make a girl mad. This happens a lot. Yeah. And she just decides, hey, you're going in the rape kit now. You know, oh. I'm going to take a little bit of your hair. You left your, your sweater hair, your here. Your hair, right. I'm when... going to do, I'm going to take some kind of swab off something, you know. A we swab did off kiss. something? I don't know. Okay. You know what I mean? No what idea. If, what if, I'm saying that 
Yeah, you before, keep that up for a second, could you swab his iPhone? Before, um, yeah. Before, and submit it and if arrest If this him. wasn't available. That wouldn't, that wouldn't be semen. But if, is that the only thing that works? Well, you yeah. know, you, you don't I'm know saying. where his iPhone has been. But there <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Is your, is your iPhone covered with semen? If so. I don't believe so. Okay. It is only so. what I'll is it Thursday? So Friday night is usually for for that. Yeah. Um, right. We yeah. haven't hit the weekend yet. Yeah, is we haven't hit saying? the weekend. Yes. I do. I clean my phone every Monday. Okay. Good. That's yes. Good yes. Phone. Yes. No. What I'm saying is, before there's not a collection thing, right? Before you exist, there's not yeah. a collection thing, so nobody can set me up with a device like this. Now that this device exists, what, what is what is to say that I go on a date with you yes. and I get angry at you? Yes. My kid. You will. My kit, my kit does not exist, right? In yes. the world, like, yeah. let's go back 2018. You okay? can still, I under, what you're going to so, say, you could still report, you could still say something. Well, I could not only say something, but I, I, you know, could say, you know what? I didn't feel comfortable getting a rape kit examination and go through a verbal, you know, like and right. say, right? Or but you if can't, I But really, you can't do that in the privacy of your own home. You have to go to the police station and lie about me, you know? Oh, but I mean, yeah, but you made bring me the rape kit and she if, has to if, go to the police station anyways. You if I am like, malicious, yeah. there's still the reporting stuff. If like, I am a malicious happens. person and I would like to fuck over your life for one reason or another, it's yes. not going to take please, my Madison. kids. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you know, I will I will do it in whatever form or fashion. In fact, if I was incredibly malicious and really wanted to fuck up your life, I, get what you're saying. I would go to a hospital and do a rape kit examination. Right. Yeah. Can there be a counter rape kit that you also sell for people who are anticipating uh, being accused? What do you mean? Yeah, uh, counter evidence. Uh, yeah, counter uh, evidence? just something that that the other party could also have, proving that uh, you know I was gentle. Here are the texts. <laughs> she was nice. Uh, she I, said, could, "Let me could, see you, you babe." It was a gen gentle gentometer. <laughs> yeah. You could you could start having everyone sign documents before you have sex. Because this is what is I, it? Uh, definitely. The, um, there's no. there's a reason right now that uh, college educated people or uh, yeah I mean, most people um, aren't really procreating, having as much sex as they used to. Right? We're not as bad as uh, Japan right now, but we might be getting there. Doesn't that hamper? Uh, Hamper sex? Just, just our, you know, Western procreation. Are you furthering the gender Because this is scary. Yeah. I, I look at this. I look at your your beautiful exposed legs. And I don't know what to do. It's. It, I think it's creating a culture of fear. And also think about this. Um, it, right now, what? It's uh, more women in college than men, right? By what percentage? I think it's 60-40. Uh, Say it again. 60-40. 60-40. So, uh, and yet, one of the claims is 70% of women in college are uh, are raped. And then you're also underpaid. There's this this whole, uh, oh you my gosh, female have it so yes. hard. You guys one, have one it so hard. One in four college women. One in four. College women, depending on the institution. Okay, well, stop going to college and give the spaces back to the man, right? And if so everybody's in the workplace, I'm just saying if everybody's getting raped in college, uh, then it's not I nice. mean, th those stats, by the way, they're <laughs> it's a dangerous place. Those, those rape stats, they're worse, a dangerous they're, place. they're worse than what's reported in like Ghana. Uh, so if, if American institutions are like this, this hotbed of rape, military, maybe we don't need the kids. Maybe just also, less women should go to college. The military is also saying, a hotbed of rape. Should we have people not serve this country? You think women should be in the military, well, Lucia? Yeah, do you I think, think that's women an easy should answer be in the military? <laughs> I mean, do you think women are, are great in battle? I would. So, well, exa yeah, exactly. I think I think I wouldn't personally if, be. You know, like, it, I'm not very strong, but I, I think mean, there's a lot of people that train and are a lot better than me that should be able to be well, in the he, military. Kind of what well he said before about the rape statistics. Kind of he's saying that, like, your you, the rape statistics of which uh, create the necessity for a product like this may not yeah. be true. Maybe it, not do we need rape. this? Do we need this on college campuses, or is it addressing an issue that is kind of not real? See, I think regardless of what you think of the statistics, though, I think there is, and I'm not like taking a personal opinion or stance one way or the other, but I think there's a reason that it was a lot of like Democratic women that were resisting it because I almost think with your thing, with the culture of fear, people are worried more so that with something like this, it will require physical evidence 
to prove rape. It would almost take away from people feeling like verbal because like the like Title Nine, like the kangaroo court, whatever. Consent. Verbal like this is a good this is a good question. Things could like rapes have been proven without DNA, not like prove whatever. People have been convicted without DNA. Which is DNA. the hottest thing in the fucking world. Men, right, Title so, Nine saying, Do you mind if we fuck? Well, uh, it it ruins the mood, right? I mean, sure, like. But she's. Just, and then you what are you say, saying? Yes, is yes, uh, I um, yeah, I would love to fuck, but just so you know, if it's a little rough, I have this kit. On no, my right? See, does I it think, does I it disqualify the, verbal consent? I think I think the kit would almost be the opposite of that because it would be. I think people would be worried then that that couldn't happen anymore. That people couldn't just say, "Oh, I was raped." Don't have any DNA. Believe me, that it wouldn't be a he said she said. It would require there always well, being DNA. My that oh. my my background. Like, I, I love that point. Um, so my background is in epidemiology. Okay. Nice. And um, smart with, too. God damn it. I like numbers. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, you know, in epidemiology and public health studies, generally speaking, there's um, you always account for bias, right? And so when you're doing a survey or if you're asking somebody, say if you're you know, doing population-based studies on Alzheimer's, right? You know, yeah. and you're talking to Alzheimer's patients, you have to assume that there's like some bias, right? They might not m remember, or, you know, things might not always be accurate. And so truly when I did start this company, you know, I thought about um, the fact that at least you would be able to have one thing that proved that the event happened. Now, in order to get a conviction, yeah. right, it does not only take this kid, it it takes being able to prove consent, which is incredibly difficult because consent is highly psychological, um, force, and also did the event happen. And so while the other two might be very difficult to prove, can you at least prove that the event happened in a way that doesn't feel traumatizing, right? In a four to six hour long examination where someone is basically doing like a gynecological examination or like a pap smear, which would have felt incredibly uncomfortable immediately after I was sexually assaulted, mm -hmm. can we at least make that element a little bit more kinder to the survivor? Right. Right. So, so, okay, with a uh, mattress girl at Columbia or the, the other chick who claimed that she was gang raped by that up and coming uh, potential NFL guy, who was that guy's name? No, but I, mean, I was, uh, yeah, I was would, going straight to mattress girl myself. Yeah, so so uh, would a kit like this help prove false cases or would it would it uh, work to exonerate the accused? I mean, I think I think we need to have a higher standard of evidence in cases in general. And so you know, I believe that having access to this, and being able to actually show that an event happened at least starts the conversation there, right? And so I think that that's kind of where, you know, when we talk about the Title IX stuff, yeah. right? You know, we're talking about there's really no evidence in any of these cases, really. Mm -hmm. But if we can make it, so at least we're starting somewhere, you know, and colleges are able to say, you know what, we understand that most people might not want to go forward with an entire examination, we provide these on campuses alongside sexual assault nurse examiners that can do a virtual examination as well as like the medical resources afterwards. At least then whenever it enters into a Title IX examination, we're kind of starting at that level right. of, of, you know, I have put my best foot forward to do this. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's why my gut reaction at least isn't like, oh, that'll further a culture of fear because now at least like say you're at a party and like some crazy girl is trying to hook up with you and you're not into it and she's mad and she like, her feelings are hurt time. and she says like you raped her like no like you know like there's no physical evidence so, somebody like who, that. who's worried about being excused they could swab their body and be like yeah uh nowhere near I, oh for sure i guess so. right like yeah, i, I feel like, like it's I feel like for both sides, it's creating... Yeah, you said there's an STD component to this, too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, not specifically in this, but in a separate um, STI um, test. Like when they send it back in, they can maybe get we, that... We can, we can test for, you know, the most common STIs. Interesting. You know, um, I like can that. you trace it, say, orgy situation? I was, uh, when I went to Bard... <laughs> Um, it was a lot it was, like, it was two in the morning and, uh, it was me, uh, two other male friends. And then, um, these two girls, Abby and Manuela, right? One of the guys, he said, well, the ratio, male to female ratio is off. It's gay unless we get another girl. Uh, my friend Kenny walked around, uh, just outside my apartment and found this very, uh, 
borderline obese uh, Mexican girl. Uh, Bar college. Her, brought her back in. Undergrad. And uh, I went to Hampshire, so equally oh, yeah. crazy. Next day, or two days later, I had little little dots uh, between my fingers oh. uh, and my crotch. Oh my Scabies. Yeah. From the you know fat people that carry carry <laughs> around all these things. Um, could the could it uh, a kit test for that? For skin. And could it definitively <laughs> tell me that it where was I that fat this, Mexican girl? Where you got oh. the scabies? I did. Well, I if did. you make it terrifying, if by you the way. make them all take the test, you could figure it out. Yeah. Well, I, not after you've all been together, maybe not. Um, I, I, I don't believe that a test for scabies would identify the person who had the scabies. But I mean, I guess if if the if the person touched you and then you were to do touch DNA immediately after, and then you were to run a genetic profile on the individual and then take their profile and then tell me if this is like profiles. not your business and you don't know why I'm asking you this, but do things like this exist for STDs or stuff like that? At home testing? Y um, for STIs? Like some kind of mail in wrapping. Yes, thing? of course. That exists. At home STI I have testing. No idea if that exists. At home STI testing, COVID testing. Is there like a rapid one you can just make somebody take at a bar? STI so. test? <laughs> no, asking. not no, because it takes it takes. I thought I was about to learn something new. I'm well, stock up. No, there's me. there's a turnaround time when it comes okay. to well, um, not having a laboratory look at that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Was all the like levels of it part of the initial thing, or has that kind of been developed? No, we wanted we wanted to be a holistic solution. Okay. So cool. we wanted to make sure that we weren't just a forensics company; that we were truly a healthcare company. Yeah. And we acknowledge the fact that sexual assault is not just a criminal justice matter, but it's a healthcare problem, right? Like for instance, women have a higher chance of endometrial and cervical cancer um, after they've been sexually assaulted because their likelihood of getting a gynecological examination and getting a pap smear, which could identify early cervical or, or endometrial cancer, doesn't happen because they're too afraid to go through the examination. That can also lead to STDs going untreated or, you know, adverse side effects um, if they were drugged um, or even HIV, you know, which unfortunately happens in some cases of rape as well, right? We do HIV testing and we also offer um, post-exposure prophylaxis. How fucking strong are you to take something bad that happened and now talk about it every single day, really? And every go, single day. How long did it take for the, that not to be like a fucking nightmare? Is it? It's still got to be like not the greatest part, right? No, I mean, I like I, you know, I'm very. I can talk about it all day long. It's no problem. I can make jokes, you know. But really, I in the be beginning, it was like that. Did you just kind of have to decide? Okay, I'm gonna put this out there. Yeah. And now that. So my story of sexual assault and like how people got to know it, like specifically my parents, like coming out to your parents and telling them that you were sexually assaulted is a big thing. And my mom found out from my ex-boyfriend telling her. I didn't even get a chance to, you know, kind of tell her. And so that- Another guy fucking it up. Wait, what was, what was uh, your assault or rape or whatever you want to call it? What? I, I hate all these labels for the same thing. Yeah, uh, your experience. What was your experience oh, no. exactly? Uh, is that is that a <laughs> a too inappropriate a question? I'm more I'm more than happy to talk about it. Um, I, I talk okay. about it every day. Yeah, actually, I mean this proves okay, this proves. Um, I feel bad for the listeners having to. You know. I'm embarrassed. I don't know. Sometimes I'm embarrassed because you, I feel like you're saying something that makes you feel bad. So when you say it to me, I just want you to stop. I think one of the the things you know when people ask me about my sexual assault, they always kind of stare at me and they like frown or they look like they're like. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, of right. course, like, be sorry. Yes, it's a very bad thing. But, right. you know, I've, I've, I am doing this not just for myself. I'm doing this because one day I hope to have a daughter right. who is as strong of a woman as I am. Oh, my God. You know, my um, eyes are watering up right now. And, um, and, you know, I'm doing this for all the daughters yeah. um, that one day will go to college or maybe serve in the military because they'll be strong. Um, okay. you know, know, you know, or hopefully yes. I'll, I'll, I kind of feel like she could use a gun. I'll, oh, I, I just learned how to shoot a gun recently. I kind of feel like that's probably going to be good for you. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so, um, you know, hopefully I'll procreate with someone who has less bird bones than I do. Um, you know, that, that can serve this country, but you know, a very strong woman, you know, and I don't want her to go through the same thing that I went through, whether it is on a college campus whether it is in the military, whether it is in her office, whether it is at school. How much would you uh, so sell bad. me an egg for? Sorry? How much would you sell me an egg for? 
sell you an egg for? Yeah. Oh, one of my eggs. I am. Oh, I thought you about, meant somebody else. No, or or yeah, <laughs> one uh, of them that comes back. <laughs> you know, I I think I like your jeans. Um, I don't want to be accused of anything, but we have the kids to prove it. Uh, so. I, Monetary transaction. If you what want to raise my kid, what are you going to do kid. with my? You need someone to carry it. Don't I need your sperm? I mean, between between uh, <laughs> are you know, you, my are lineage you, and she need your sperm? and uh, uh, your body, uh, <laughs> we'd make a great kid. Hundred k. Hundred k. More. Hundred k. Yeah. Yeah. Send me Venmo. Okay. Yes. You know, I'm I'm in my mid thirties now. I need to act quickly. <laughs> you need to act quickly. Yeah. I'm 27, which you know, in other other decades Don't would be that. like it's fine. You 27? know, 27. Yeah. Fine. Well, that's when the eggs are like perfectly ripe. I, ideally, 25 <laughs> would be a little better, but I can. Okay, 75k. Now that you mentioned it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that price got halved. It was just no, you talking. Wow. It was just going down while you were talking. Wow. But no, I mean, with with my sexual assault, I, and like I said, I'm doing this not because of me. I'm doing this for future generations, yeah. right? And my sexual assault, I think, is um, is is an average story. You know, it's it's something that when I tell the story, it's like a lot of women and men, you know, have told me very similar stories. Yeah. Um, you know, I was in my dormitory. Um, this is my junior year of college. I was in my dormitory. Um, I was staying up very late studying and I had made a friend, um, you know, early in college, he was a foreign exchange student specifically from Switzerland. And, you know, I had kind of become friends with him and showing him around and, you know, we would do homework together. Absolutely nothing weird, no inappropriateness that has ever happened between him and I. And he was staying out really late at night, um, drinking a lot, um, very much drinking. I've been there. Um, I don't drink alcohol. Um, Ever? No. Not back then? Uh, no. Wow. A fortitude on this lady. You're Mormon? Or no. Why? No. <laughs> I know I'm blonde, but not Mormon. Um, no, I just, I don't like the taste. Um, and I don't like being out of control, generally speaking. Is it, um... Skinny girl syndrome where a little bit of alcohol got you really drunk when you were younger and so you're like... Oh, no. It's, I never had alcohol growing up either except okay. in church. Have you, you ever, oh. have you ever like, been drunk? Or no? Uh, no. Wow, well, wow shut up. You. Really? No. Oh, God, I'm such a scumbag. Every no. time there's somebody nice on this show, I'm like, I'm a <laughs> terrible person. Um, no, but I mean, you know, um, he had been drinking a lot um, and, you know, he was a single guy six four um served in the military in switzerland you have mandatory military service um big guy i'm uh five four um slight petite and you know this person is very different than me very big and um he had been at a bar that night and he basically like swung out right so you know his goal was to go to the bar and then you know meet somebody and take them home and he texted me. It was very late at night. And he basically was like, where are you at? It was it was a version of where you at. But basically, like, you know, I, I thought I was hitting it on with this girl. And then she, you know, didn't want to go home with me. Yeah. And I said something to the effect of, you know, just because it didn't work out here doesn't mean that you won't find the person that you're supposed to be with. You're a nice guy. You're very kind, you know. Um, and I really hope that. You know, it's the, the nice guys, isn't it, Lucian? Well, I, nice I, I, how would you interpret that if you're into uh, a it's chick always and you were like you were striking out at a bar and somebody like says, that. well, you know, maybe you haven't found the right person, nudge, nudge. Well, he came over. He, um, that that's a word to describe what he did. Um, so, well, wait, so, so, go ahead, keep talking. You know, uh, yes, he eventually ended up in my dormitory without my permission. You were just okay, trying so to you were just trying to comfort him, though, right? I was just trying to comfort so him. Did he break into or the goddamn no, place? Not. Did he, he break didn't, in? He didn't break in. We lived in the same like dorm. dormitory building. So, okay. Yeah, and you were like you were stone cold sober. I was stone cold sober. Were you in your room or in like the I study? Was in my you were room. in your room. Okay. I was in my and room. So he came into your room. Yeah. So the the okay. the way that the dormitories worked is um, there's a bunch of individual rooms with like a like a common room, mm -hmm. um, and so he somebody let him into kind of like the individual hall. It's like, like a horror story. Yeah, and then you know, and then he shows up at my door, and I'm yeah. like, oh, are you okay? You know, like is every is everything okay? 
Um, and, you know, he basically, like, walked in the room. And I have this I have this visceral thing. I, I hate um, wife beaters, uh, you know. Okay. Uh, because he was wearing a wife beater underneath his button down. Um, was he fat? No, no. I mean, but he was he was big, right? Like, he's, like, very muscular. Like, 6'4", military. Wife beaters tend to be a, a fat man's uh, undershirt. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. okay. Oh God! Going. Sorry. Goodness gracious. Um. No, but you know he was not fat. Um. But yeah, he was. He was wearing a wife beater. He started basically like um unbuttoning very slowly his his button down, and um and you know that was that was uh that was the beginning. I hated that. I hated every second of that fucking story. <laughs> and, um, um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not a nice guy. Not a, not a nice guy. Did and he ever get what was coming? Did, did any of that? No, because you no, decided. No, I mean, the next the next day, he um, he asked me out for lunch. Right. What the fuck? <laughs> That's fucking normal, right, for people like that, though? Have You you must hear other people's stories all yeah. the time, right? It's well, always and, the nice guy, and he's always calling back the next well, day. Well, so the majority of sexual assaults are of someone that you know. Yeah. Um, so it's not like okay, the, Wait, wait, back to the story. What did you say when he invited you out to lunch? Like, yeah, I didn't. Right? I never replied. Yeah. And then uh, seized all contact, seized didn't all report contact, it to your school. Didn't report it. Didn't do anything. I dyed um, my hair black. Oh, okay, so was, was that part. like the... That's yeah, oh, yeah, that's the um, Oh, this keeps getting worse. <laughs> so that was that was the inspiration behind... If you, like, if you had uh, this kid, you would have used... So What would your actual actions have been? If you had this under your bed, would you have used it or you obviously... So I, I went to a pharmacy uh -huh. to try to, like, triage a situation. I'm a very, like, okay, I'll go to a pharmacy. I'll take care of it myself type of thing. Um, and, you know, I there was no, there's nothing there, really, you know, for me to get at a pharmacy. Right. And, you know, we that's the goal, right, is to be in access points, you know, whether that is pharmacies or it's, like, a local, like, place at your college or university that you can get access to this. And so... It wasn't that I didn't try to do anything. I tried to triage it myself, and it there's just there's no options. What am I gonna get band aids and like you know? Right. No, I, I yeah. get it. And so if maybe if this was available, you would have gotten it, and there could have been a whole different thing. Yeah, but instead of reaching for an early evidence kit, I reached for a box of hair dye because, um, and then I ended up cutting my hair off, like very very short because I'm gonna I, kill this guy. I didn't. I didn't want to. I didn't want to ever be looked at. Yes. Um, in a feminine way. And now, like, I mean, it's, it's very cool that I get to sit here with you with, you know, like, in this dress, you know, looking nice and more feminine because I've, I've kind of reclaimed that part of me where I'm not afraid to be feminine anymore and I'm not afraid to have that aspect be part of me. But there is a, a part of me for a very long time that never wanted to wear a dress, never wanted to put on makeup, never wanted to, like, you know, look like a traditional woman um, in, in that sense, like the sense that he viewed me Right. That was the reason why he raped me. But you don't well, have to feel. You know, you, you, so what's better? Uh, these kits are maybe uh, expanding gun laws. Uh, Should you have just shot him? If you, if you work, it, if you could conceal uh, carry, wouldn't that be better? And you wouldn't need this kit. This whole if you process. Had a gun, he would have not shown up there. Yeah, absolutely. If everybody knew you had a twenty-two and you yeah. were always like Once shooting it in your the air, it would have you know situation wouldn't have happened. The answer is guns. <laughs> I think that's it, yeah, it is. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, the question is that's like, not her business. Her business is at yeah. guns, but that's obviously the answer. Yeah, right, right to bear rape kits. Here's as as a as a rape expert, uh, I have a question for you. Um, is it rape uh, if a guy? Uh, this happened twice. Uh, if a guy uh, drugs you and then sucks your dick, so there's no pen. There's I guess reverse penetration. Yeah, I mean, I think what your experience is. Is whatever you would like to call it, whether that's rape saying, or sexual assault. Are you want to tell us a story right now? Uh, well, <laughs> well, tell us. No, she okay. just did something very. So, uh, she really put herself out there doing that. I was thinking about what kind of. I don't have any stories. Anymore. So when I um, quit the White House, came back to uh, to New York. Yeah. DC is terrible. DC is a uh, terrible place, but you did rule it for a short time. I, 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 kingmaker That's and right. uh, king myself. That's right. Came back. Uh, people, I guess, thought uh, I lost some of that power. One of them, <laughs> I'm not going to mention him by name, but he was uh, the organizer of Stop the Seal Steal January 6th. Oh, okay. Um, 
You don't have to say the name. And, uh, <laughs> you know, a uh, fella gave me a drink with uh, a sedative in it. Really? Walked me back to my apartment. I woke up. He was, he asked to crash. The, I woke up. He was on my couch. My boxers were off. Yeah. If I have a guest over, you know, I'm not wandering around naked. It's right. rude. You know, I was raised in a polite society. Uh, so, yeah, wake up. Why are my boxers off? Turn to him. He says, well, you know, you looked, uh, you were just passed out. You looked so attractive sleeping. I couldn't help myself. I sucked your dick. Oh, he just told you. He told me, which was <laughs> extra, fe- extra fucking <laughs> offensive. I would have preferred if he lied like about it, quite about honestly. It. Like, oh, I was really drunk, and um, I don't know what happened. And then very, <laughs> so you said your guy invited you out to lunch the next day. This kid uh, crashing on my couch. I ended up going, I still didn't believe him. I thought it was bullshit. Went out to lunch with him at, actually, Veselka. And he had an intern, uh, his intern, meet up with us. He was like, oh, yeah, you know, you wouldn't believe what I did last night. Uh, Lucian was passed he was, out. He I did to his intern. Story? He told his intern. He was bragging that, about sexually yeah, assaulting that after you. After he drugged me, wow. he sucked my dick. As you I ever was hear a Lucian before? Uh, <laughs> Let me no. tell you a story. <laughs> did he tell you he drugged you? Was he like, by the way, I slipped something in your drink? Yeah. Or was that, he, just that one he hinted at. He didn't directly say it. the The weirdest direct thing he said was, "You looked so attractive. You were fully passed out. I couldn't help myself." Yeah, that's yeah, that's that weird. is fucking yeah, crazy. Bad. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Um, but, I've okay, been so drugged before. My question, before. as as the rape expert on this panel, I've been is drugged that, before. Is, but is that rape? Is like that. sucking a dick rape? I, th- I, th- I th- could I, I use your kit? Oh. Yeah. How would I use it? You would have swabbed around your penal shaft. To find his DNA. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that made me really soft thing. That's penal it. We're going to have penal shaft. Away. That's the worst. I was, I was drugged once. I've heard in my life. I was drugged, wa- drugged once when I was with some women. And I think the idea was to kind of take me out of my role as watching what was going on. Yeah. And I was, I was with three other women and we were all drugged. And I was drugged heavily. Like somebody just... I don't know what they do, if it's pills or they squirt it in there, but somebody got me good on the first drink, and it was like I took drugs from the 70s. I was like <laughs> fucked up. Right well, there. so when it comes back to um, talking about how convictions usually happen, so we go back to did something happen? Was there force? Um, and was there consent, right? Right. So um, force is an interesting one where drugs actually kind of count as force, right? Yeah, definitely. Because you can't consent, you know, when... It, if it, you, when you've been drugged anonymously. If you've... if in When you were drugged, yeah. to the level you were drugged, do it you was. think you could have consented? I couldn't walk. You couldn't walk. I was very drugged. I was smart enough just to hit the phone and get a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, I think the idea was just to blotto all of us and then, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. that can prove force. So, I, do, I do think drugging with the uh, hope of raping somebody happens more than rape. If you did just have a yeah. was I drugged kit. We do have that. A standalone was I drugged we, kit. We have a talk. Well, it's called toxicology. But yes, we do toxicology. Testing. Okay, I'll buy a couple of those. Okay. You, I guess. Yeah. So the most common date rape drugs are rohypnol, GHB, and ketamine. Right. And we test for all of those. Um, and you can test both in urine, blood, and hair. And so if you're able, what I'm- what That I'm, seems to be a lot, you know, I understand. I don't mean it's more important. It seems like that is something that's going to stand up in court. If I get a test back that says I was drugged. So imagine that, that. Like, if you were, so imagine we have a test yeah. that says you were drugged with rohypnol. Yeah. That comes back positive. We also have a test that says there is two DNA strands that were found from the vaginal canal or the right. penal shaft. And then- I, I've, Please stop saying penal shaft. Yeah, that's that's the worst. We have one said of, so many uncomfortable one of things. Those, <laughs> one of those DNA strands is my is mine. Yeah. One of those DNA strands is to an unknown individual. Yeah, and you've been drugged. And toxicology. Yeah. You know? Um, that creates what's, a what's chain. A, what's a, uh, um, a vagina version? Uh, uh, vaginal tunnel? Sure. Versus penal shaft? What, what, is there an equivalent? And it, Awful. We'll, we'll call it a time. Like, uh, He's hey, really hey, making babe, you be I, the biologist I you. today. I'd love you. I, I'd love my my <laughs> penal shaft in your vaginal tunnel. 
Uh, <laughs> is it still seventy five thousand dollars? How much were? Well, no, we went down back? to uh, thinking about these tunnels and shafts. I, I think we're at fifty now. Oh wow! Oh, the mind fetish. You're doing the mind fetish again. Tunnel it's shaft, negging. mind oh, fetish. Negging, negging. But yeah, I mean, so what we're trying to basically do, right, and say is that, you know, you should be able to have all of all of these tools in the toolbox. Yeah. As a survivor. You should be able to do toxicology testing. If you don't feel comfortable going into, you know, a hospital or into a clinic to do toxicology testing, of course, you should do that in the comfort of your own home. And what is, besides the, like, the fact that it's the comfort of your own home, what's the difference in response time? Like, if you are drugged or if you're raped, like, how does DNA and, like, how long do those things stay D- in your DNA system? DNA degrades incredibly quickly. Okay, yeah. Um, And so the goal is to get it as like soon as the event is humanly possible. Right. Most states will only do a rape kit done in a hospital up to 120 hours. Oh. Um, that's a longer that's, than I would have guessed. Um, well, there has been studies where it says that DNA can be found much longer. But for instance, in um, in the now I just don't want to use tunnel again. You know, I feel <laughs> bad. <laughs> um, in in parts of the anus right that yeah. dna can expel quicker anal and so tunnels, yeah. yeah the the anal tunnel um <laughs> you and know. the drugging the drugging goes away pretty quick too like if you don't get the drug test done that, that will go away pretty quick. so in in urine and blood um but hair can actually stay for um longer but also then it would hold up less because it's like you don't know when that was. Like if it's no, hair, so it there is from... there is laboratories that can look at a specific hair strand and kind of and get very, very close to the actual event. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's impressive. Yeah. I feel I ha- haven't had to talk about this in a very long time. It's We're like, really <laughs> grilling you, aren't but, we? Um, this is like but, grilling. Yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it'd be uh, fun to also include a preventative measure, maybe one of those rape alarms that go... Uh, but also with a switchblade attached to it. What if it kind of stop it before it happens? What if you kind of flip that box all, and a blade yeah, came I mean, out? This too. is all <laughs> assuming that everybody is running around getting raped. Don't you want to prevent these rapes? Why are you waiting for the rapes? Giving them these kits. Well, that's not her company. She's another company that does. Okay, that. well, that's my idea. Well, uh, switchblades with alarms attached. <laughs> <laughs> there is, there is. A... I, I bet you, I sell more of my switchblade alarms. I want to go back to the firearm. Uh, you Fire did Island? You, firearm. You never thought about arming yourself after all that shit? Um, well, I I had a significant other who was um heavily armed. He was in the military and he had a lot of guns at home. Okay. Um, so that, I, I'm just asking, like, I don't know. That didn't occur to you immediately. If someone broke into my house and didn't even assault me, but I woke up, someone was in there, and then I saw them ran away, they didn't even assault me, I would go get a gun. Like I, that would still make yeah, me get a gun. Yeah, it never, it never, um, really? it never. No. I hate the city because of the guns. I would have one. I would go sober to carry a gun around the city. I would it never de- drink it again. definitely made me more. I would never drink again. It definitely made me more weary about like men that I went on dates with. Yeah. You know, in general, um, and I've been very thankful to have dated now people that have been like highly, highly like you know. We talk about consent. We talk about well. It's not means. like you chose wrong before that you didn't choose this yeah, guy. No, you know what I mean? Not. It's not like you let a, a let a creeper in your life because <laughs> you didn't really let him in. No, so. no, no, well, that's no, why like the gun no. thing. Like it was like her friend. Like what's she gonna do? Shoot like he him. shows up at the door. Like she, like yeah. no, but I mean like before like. By the, like guns are more. I feel like it's I know, but he doesn't know, you know, and it's like it's yeah. over here. He has no idea what's happening. He thinks he's in control of the situation, and then all of a sudden, it's in a stop. I I feel like that would probably be more dangerous. I feel like I might be harmed if I. Uh, <laughs> I hate when people say that. Well, because I I hadn't gone through proper gun safety. Right, I understand, and also young women don't jump right to firearm. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, girls aren't. If like I'm if thing. I'm being honest, I didn't fight. Like, I really didn't. You know, like I, I wasn't like. You know, th- there's a weird thing where you just kind of understand that this is happening. The reason why I think sexual assault, child abuse, whatever you you know, is so egregious, is because as a child you have no idea what right. is happening to you. Right. You know, I had, I'd obviously had sex, you know, before this point. Um, How old were you? I was uh, twenty. Uh, virginity, uh, virginity lost at twenty. <laughs> No, no. I was 20 when the, the rape happened. So when Other did I question? lose my virginity? Yeah, yeah. Before 20. You have to answer give me, too. Yeah, though. give me You have to answer too, Lucia. <laughs> if you answer, then I'll answer. How are we defining it? Just a penis in a hole or... 
It can whatever whatever, whatever you, you think you counts, Lucian. <laughs> mm, maybe the first uh, 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 organic hole, I guess, that my penis went into was uh, seventeen. I, I was gonna guess it was later. Wait, um, wow! <laughs> Fuck you, dude. I'm just okay, how about you? How about you? I was really young. I was really young when it happened because I grew up in a blighted place where all the girls eventually became strippers. So when those same girls are like in middle school, the shit's already going down. So in middle um, school, how yes. old were you? I no, I was thirteen. Wearing so that hat. I don't know if I was in middle. I was um, in sixth see. grade, which is middle school. And it was like sex. actual a sex or yeah. blowjob. Wow. Yep. A girl offered me sex after offering another boy sex who said no. So you, we were standing in an alley. Sex, and, well, right? we were standing in an alley, and I was like, I'll, I want that. <laughs> Why you said no? <laughs> Push down the hat. Yes, ma'am. I looked at the other kid, and I was like, you said no. Um, Chloe? Where were we? I don't even remember. <laughs> it's Chloe's turn to tell us. <laughs> I feel like just like... I don't know. I won't I look at you how... while you tell the story, Chloe. I'm not telling you. I think I was like 16. 16 okay, she 17. was normal. Yeah. A normal thing happened to Chloe. That's kind of like Chloe. Yeah. The it's normal thing happened standard. to her. Yeah. Just standard stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, no, I mean, so it, I, it, the, the reason why I think, at, you know, child abuse, specifically relating to sexual assault is so egregious is because you don't know what's happening. You know, is it, is it you know. Yeah. And so I knew that the easiest way for me to get away. That's what you hear a lot. Is people, girls know that this is about to be over and this guy's really big and what are we, what am I going to do? What am do I going to do? I'm not going to, I can't, I can't win here. Right. You know? And so the weakest point is to wait for him to basically complete and then hopefully get away, which is, you know, what happened. I mean, he left. He just left my room. So, you know. Chloe, give us give us something. Give us a personal reminiscence here. Did any guy you ever have to stick your thumb in some guy's eye or anything like that? Oh my god! I mean, did no not work before, and you have to grab a guy? I feel, I don't. I'm not like an aggressive. I, I feel like I. I learned. know that's why I'm asking you. Is anything? Tell us. Has anything ever happened where you had to put a boy in his place, and you or you had to call somebody? Or I mean, I've I've had like bad experience. Yeah, I feel like most. Girls have had. I'm just. Not, I've never like punched someone. Like I. I don't okay, think that's I what I'm at. Like, someone. did you ever? Do you ever have to institute violence to stop somebody from having the wrong idea? Mm, like it sounds like yes to me. <laughs> well, I don't like. <laughs> not just not just strong arm a guy. Not just like create some distance between you. Have yeah. you ever have you ever had to like tell a guy, hey, I said no. Here's a blade. I mean, you know? like I'm being serious. Yeah. Well. I mean, whatever. I don't need to, like, get in. Like, I feel like most girls have had, like, bad experiences. Yeah. Like, yeah. I like when I was, like, I was pretty young, like, 15, like, my sophomore year of high school, I was, like, drunk at a party. And granted, you know, I do think alcohol comes into things with, oh, and, like, whatever. Yeah. I don't think that changes that much, like, necessarily. Um, but this guy, I was, like, laying on the couch. And this guy came over and was, like, you look really messy. Like, you should go to bed. And I was, like, oh, okay. I was at this friend of house. I was like, okay, and I like went up and like I fell asleep because I was drunk. And then I like woke up five minutes later and he, and like he had, was there. yeah, and he like had my clothes off and stuff. And nothing. I got up and I like booked it. It was a close and, call. And I'd also somehow I don't know how I'd, as I was going upstairs I'd called my mom and I hadn't realized that. So she was already like outside the party like calling me. So I run outside. My Great mom's instincts. there. But then I'm like wearing like my dress like inside out like crying. My mom's like, what the fuck happened? Like yeah. it was not a good look. But nothing horrible happened. But like that I do think those. Yeah, I don't know. This shit I happens, like, man. I so like he lovingly be... put you to bed, and uh, the nice you, guys. Ra you See, ran out and called your what? mom. He went... See, if you had that kit, uh, his life would be over. No, seriously, though, it's the nice guys. Like, and this guy's like, hey, I'm trying to take care of you. See, the there's a, he actually wasn't exists. that nice. He was like, you look really messy. You look kind of like a whore. Like, you should go to bed. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. wow. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I do think, like... Whatever, I'm not, it's not even, like, I just think you'd be hard-pressed to find a girl that hasn't had an experience of some, and yeah. I count myself pretty, like, I don't know, I feel like, of course you, like, everyone, I feel like you must talk to so many women that constantly are on guard of things, like, you must I be almost the, feel like the collector of these stories. Yeah, For sure. like, I almost feel like the reason that that's, like, when I was 15 is because, like, since, and I'm not saying it's, like, other people's fault, but, like, since then you learn to be, like, self-protective, and I haven't put myself 
in, I'm not saying that anyone's putting themselves in, like that it's their fault at all, but I'm saying. Is I it mean, not? Lucian's hearing what Is it saying. not? Come on. You're kind of saying that you learned was your it, lesson about your the alcohol and the boys. That you, of what happened to you? Was that your fault? You know, uh, you think inviting a uh, sort of a political operative to crash on your couch for two days wouldn't result in that? Um, learn my lesson, though. Uh, but I'm saying you didn't deserve that. You didn't. I'm sure you didn't think that that was going to happen. Well, you know, I, I retaliated in my own way. <laughs> Also, though, could you tell us about? You don't want to tell us. About um, well, you know, there there are pending court cases against oh, that guy in multiple states now. Good, good for you. But I mean, what, what's funny is he he uh, typically targeted no part thirteen of to eighteen year olds, and I was uh, twenty nine, so I was out of his range. I'm I'm you still be, shocked that I you're that flattered. I fell into it. You're flattered. But yeah, after after <laughs> after my experience with him, I hit like uh, hit up a couple of my researchers who I've worked with uh, when I was writing more. And I was like, okay, let's dig into this situation because that's atypical, uh, shitty, unhuman behavior. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, wow, the, the stuff we found. Actually, tell you what. Lucian, he, I would never want to cross you or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, you know, uh, <laughs> if you don't have any dirt behind you, it's right. hard to pull anything up. Uh, he... The most the most terrifying, egregious thing he did was uh, there was this straight kid. He was 16, right? He uh, said, you know, I have an internship opening up. Uh, move, move on down to Louisiana. You'll meet all these politicians, become influential. Like, mm. you'll start your political career. His parents were like, it's a little weird that this 33-year-old... Wants to take you out. Yeah, the wants you to move in with him in Louisiana. But he he uh, just left, sort of ran away, went down there. Within a week, this guy, who I'm not mentioning his name, uh, said, well, you know, part of this is a uh, give and take. I want you to wear this anal plug, would you, or butt plug, uh, just Gross. to prime yourself for my dick. So under his, I visited this guy in Louisiana. I didn't know he was doing any of the shit. I still feel guilty for not picking up on it. Uh, you should but have yeah, felt guilty. Th you this kid, know. this kid was walking around with a butt saying. plug uh, under his pants, um, and then That's sort so of raped wow. every night. That's horrible. Oh my! How did this come out? Did you? Well, there's, Lucian there's, made it come out. Well, let's not. <laughs> let's not. Wow. There's a daily <laughs> beast. Uh, there's a daily beast. But you, did, you didn't know that was happening. No, no I didn't know the extent of it. I had. I wish and I I'm did. I'm sure if you did, you would have helped. Absolutely, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. We all think we know the the person, right? Everyone's always like, oh, if, I, if there's somebody was doing anything weird like that around here, I'd know about it. I would know if somebody I knew was doing that. I mean, oftentimes with domestic People violence yeah. cases, you know, like you'll meet the person, the person who is the domestic abuser, and, you know, to your face, they'll be incredibly nice and incredibly sweet. And then behind closed doors, you know, that's not the case. Right. Right. And so um, I know what it like. I know what it's like to be a monster behind closed doors. Yeah, it's just it's it's tough. It's right? a male. It's the male. It's I the male mean, thing. that like dichotomy too. I feel like does make it difficult for a lot of people to like immediately even know what necessarily what happened to them, or yeah. to like say it's someone in their friend group or like whatever. Like people have it usually is someone that they know that what is it like one hundred seventy two hours? You said if you want to go to the hospital, one twenty. One twenty. Yeah, like. I don't know, particularly if you are, like, young and, like, you're talking a lot to, like, college-age girls, like, freshmen in college, whatever, you're, like, 17. Like, I don't know. I do think that often that timeline probably isn't enough for people to, like, formulate what response they want yeah. to take yeah. with that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult. They used to know? tell us in college that if you didn't remember what happened the night before, then that's not consent. It was, so I would sit in these things as a freshman and listen to these people say these things and think, I can't remember four nights a week of my freshman year, you know? But Wait, they would, how, how old are you? I was a freshman in college. How old are you now? None of your fucking, what the fuck is that? Okay, so that's, that's a new thing, though. The what, new, what? The, the new thing is if... if oh, no, Title IX changed everything. The, the if, the woman, if the woman was drunk... Yeah. and you had sex with her, then yeah. that's rape. Well, they would, no, they were already saying that, but the, they were also saying it to boys, they were saying it to everybody. They were saying, if you hook up with somebody drunk, even if you're both drunk, then probably something bad happened. And I used to think like, if that's true, man, bad stuff's happening to all of us all the time, because none of us can remember anything that's happening, you know? 
So you know, I don't I don't know if it was that much different when I was in school. They were saying. See, I'm very conflicted on on these kids. I feel like the, uh, on one hand they might be able to lead to a ton of false accusations, but on the other, maybe if somebody is about to uh, go that false route, it'd be weird to go through this entire kit and like fill it out and reflect on on a bullshit claim. Right. Like, how many people are right. actually gonna like fake? I mean, a that's rape that's kit? perjury that's, too, right? Yeah. There, you know, right. They, like uh, falsifying evidence is a crime. You know, so it's not like. False but those evidence. those still can't be submitted as evidence, right? It can be submitted. Well, like as she evidence. was saying, yeah. the judge the judges in America have a lot of discretion. Discretion. Thank you, Madison. <laughs> also, I mean, and, you know, court precedents will basically yeah. set the standard, right? Yeah. And so, you know, there is a time where text messages were not used as evidence in court cases. And now text messages are routinely right. used as evidence yeah. all the time. Yes. Right? So technology changes, evidence changes yeah. constantly, and the courts, you know, will adapt. I want to ask, too, a little less on the vein of just, like, the – cold hard evidence I feel like you've done a lot of work talking to women and talking to survivors and like kind of on a more community level interacting yeah. with that do you want to talk about that a yeah bit as well? I mean yeah we we constantly like you said like I'm kind of a collector of, of yeah stories. there's an activism part to this yeah I mean um I I have been the first person that folks have told about their rape that they have not told anyone else right. um I, uh, more times than I can count you know, because they know that I, I will get it, you know, and I understand. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also one of those things where, you know, I'm not going to look at you and be like, oh, you know, you poor thing. Like, you know, because I don't like when people say to me, oh, you right. poor thing. You don't thing. like to be treated that way. I don't like to be treated like a child, you know. What yeah. happened to me was something very, very bad. But here I am, you know, for me, when people tell me their story, it's, you know, listening, understanding, uh, saying I've been there through the same thing. And I think the most important part is like, I believe you, you know, because oftentimes you don't have someone physically say those words that I believe you. Right. Um, and I'm listening to you and I'm here for you. And that's all it is. Like the one question that I get often from folks is, um, what do I do if someone comes to me and says I've been sexually assaulted and, and wants to talk about it? Mm -hmm. Right. So, of course, you can say, oh, well, you can educate them on X, Y, Z, different things, right? Um, oh. <laughs> Hi, Sean. <laughs> we can edit it. <laughs> I, I don't edit anything. Oh, we don't edit anything? Sean's in the episode now. Oh, great. <laughs> Bye. Bye, like Sean. Bye, Sean. Um, <laughs> are you, We're going to miss you, Sean. Are you gay? <laughs> Are well, you well, sure? Are you, are you positive? It's a surprisingly <laughs> nice bag for a straight man. I'll just say that. Um... um but you know, being able to say I I believe you, I hear you, I'm I'm there yeah, for by you. By the way, this studio is so fucking cheap. The AC is off. People are fanning themselves in the audience. Yeah, I'm, well, we're I'm not, burning we're gonna up. Wrap it up this is, we're, yeah, we're listening. We're she's saying like something one of these really hot sweet yoga right sessions. Now. Jesus, she's saying something sweet right now. No, and 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 <laughs> I most most see, I'm a CEO, so I can always you know come right back. You're really um, good at it. Thank you. <laughs> she's really good at. She is really good at just oh segueing away from you and just coming back to what she's doing. You know, you know, babe, you were a great CEO. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Beautiful. Thanks. Beautiful um, CEO. Is she back up you. to you were, 75K? Babe, you're a chief. Is she back up? Yeah, I'll, I'll back to tell you what. Is she back to what? Um, not, not, to, not to 75 yet. I'll give you a six, 60, 60, 62. Okay, great. Awesome. I'll do it for 62. Okay. No. <laughs> but no, I mean. It was a serious really, thing, though. No, no, no. Really, in. At the end of the day, people ask, like, what can I do, you know, if someone tells me that I've been sexually assaulted? And, of course, you know, you can say, oh, well, like, let them know about the 120 hours or let them know about mm -hmm. this, right? But at the end of the day, the best thing to say is, you know, I, I hear you. Just listen, you know. Let somebody hold space for somebody, right? Let them tell their story. And so even being here on this podcast and telling my story yeah. – and Lucian, thank you for sharing your story as well. And for you sharing your story. And for you sharing your You're story. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, right? What the fuck's your story? I would never tell you. Yeah. I feel like You're, you'd be a, the rapist. 
Thank you for saying that. With that, that hat. The, I, I kinda, although, you know what? Um, I kind of feel like if maybe... If you want to drug me and suck my dick, I kind of like... <laughs> as long as you're wearing the hat, I'll let you do you it. You could wear the hat. You could wear the hat. Okay, go. And it's, it's important. So the notion of us all coming together and telling our story allows other people, not only listening to this podcast, but other people in general to come forward and tell their story. Yeah, Because absolutely. we make talking about it. Look, we're just... We're all hanging out. We're talking about it. We're not crying. We're not, you know, like. You know what? I felt pretty yeah. weird a lot of the times, but this is stuff that needs to be talked about. It needs to be talked about. And, you know, about. my response to the phrases and, and all of that stuff yeah. is exactly what's wrong with the public. is like not being able to, you know, hear it. Let's no, just talk don't, about don't it. tell me the story, you know. It's important to talk about stuff like that. And if we can talk about it and we, you know, we're not, we're not worried about what other people right. will say and we can make jokes about it yeah. and we can be jovial and talk about the fact that. Well, yes, we're talking about sexual assault that is incredibly bad. We should also talk about the fact that that doesn't mean that all sex is bad. It means that there are amazing sexual experiences that happen. Yeah. And in fact, we should be encouraging survivors to get to a point where they can have sex again and it can be an enjoyable, you know, situation because oftentimes after a sexual assault, you don't want to do that. Why would you trust anybody again? Right. And so let's talk not about that, but let's talk about how we get back to an element of where sex is enjoyable and consensual and great. That's what we all love. Want. It. Yeah, yeah. Um, more sex, procreation. It's a beautifully for, Western. For sixty-two thousand. Uh, yeah, we need, you know, Western <laughs> world. We're dying up? out yeah. here. We're we dying to, out. So we everybody have a good time. More sex. I agree. He's right. More good sex. You know, <laughs> Ladies, more, more good sex, sex and okay, also so, safely. So we have three kits here. We have the uh, did the Hispanic uh, fat Hispanic give me habe, uh, scabies <laughs> kit, and then we have the good sex kit, ideally with you know selection of condoms, lubes, uh, right? I mean, can we do a three kit thing with uh, this? Company? You can the good vibes kit. Good vibes. Good vibes yes. kit. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean... They sell those already. I think being sex positive is incredibly important in running a company like this because, you know, we should not... we It should not just be all doom and gloom. We should talk about the fact that <laughs> sex can be... Fun. That would be so great. Okay, a good sex kit uh, next to that one. And so you save the condom or one of the uh, pieces of the good sex kit. Mm -hmm. And if it was bad, you put it in the other kit. Right? <laughs> 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 pretty well. You take one and put it in the yeah, other one, yeah. like a religious. Like, yeah, like a religious I wasn't thing. really into this one. Um, <laughs> one's black and one's pink. Yeah. You know, one's like <laughs> doom and it's got like class storm clouds on it. The other one's like happy Skull and crossbones. Yeah. Or something. Thank you very much for coming today, Madison Campbell, Lita Health, Lucian Winchurch. Um, Lucian, thank you very much for coming. Chloe Pajon, she's going straight straight back to France. Thanks Thank a lot, you. everybody. Thank oh, wait. you so much. This is going to come out later, so she's back now. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Did we do it? Hey. Were we able, were we able to do that? Hot.